Make this ultramarine. I want it strong. This big brush here that I'm using, this two inch brush, I'm, get, I'm trying to go after angles uh, because I'm painting rocks. I want good strong angles on my. Now if I was painting flowers or something with this technique, I might want to use a round brush. But for this, I want angular stuff, big deliberate strokes. Clean my brush out real good. I'm going to pick up some of this Indian yellow here. Get some of that worked up. Strong. Oh, man, look at that. It's mixing with this blue, blending with that blue and giving us a beautiful green. But see, I can even soften those edges a little bit. Come down here. Now I got a lot of warm colors here. Come back with some ultramarine right next to it. Big juicy colors float around in here. This is great. Like that. Now I got a lot of cool colors here, so let's throw in a warm color. Like this orange here. This is a uh, semi-transparent orange that Interactive makes. They've got a number of oranges, but this one uh, seems to work pretty good for me. And let's take some more of this magenta, which is a cool color, and put it in next to these warm oranges. Let's put a stroke there, stroke there. Just look at that. It's beautiful. Kind of throw that in there like that. Make sure you got plenty of strong, strong color because these colors are going to dry quite a bit lighter. Look at that. Put color in there. Just a little bit stronger here to find some of these rocks here like that. This area up here, oh, that, that turned green on me. That's great. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point. Now I'm going to want to put, um, I want to dry this completely. Little areas up here that are white, leave them alone. That adds interest to the picture. There's some little white areas in through here. Leave those alone. We're going to dry this real thoroughly with a hair dryer and then uh, come back, add a few details, and we'll have us a painting. Wet gator board with sponge and apply full sheet of watercolor paper on top. Wet watercolor paper with sponge and pad up excess. Determine areas of strong value contrast in composition. Add slow medium plus water to interactive to get a wet fluid paint. Using a large brush, Develop areas with contrasting warm and cool colors. When the first layer is done, put aside until touch dry or use a hair dryer to dry. All right, uh, we've got the painting mostly dry. Before I did dry it, I put uh, clamps on all four corners because the paper is going to shrink up. If you don't do that, it's just going to wrinkle and you're going to have a big mess. Uh, make sure the paper is completely dry before you keep on going. You can put your back of your hand on that paper, and if it's damp, it's cool to the touch, uh, the paper is still wet. So make sure it's good and dry. Now, as you can see, the foreground, my sky is perfect. The foreground has dried a little bit lighter, so I'm going to take some stronger colors. I'm going to pick up some stronger colors of the same colors that I used and uh, strengthen a few of these areas just like that. I want to let some of the colors from the background from the first go through show through. I want some of that soft stuff. I'm going to take some uh, purple here and really strengthen some of these areas around the, light, the uh, lighthouse itself. Keeping in mind I want rock shapes. I can take a little clear water Soften these edges just like you would a watercolor. Just like that. Come over here with some blues. And right next to that orange. That's beautiful. Right there. Pick up some other colors, some lost edges. Soften it just like that. Take some of this opaque magenta. 
just drop it in there. Look at that. It covers what you got, which is perfect for an opaque color. Uh, Going to add a little more here down here, maybe a rock shape like that. Soften that edge just a little bit. Pick up uh, some of this red gold again. Like I said, that's one of my favorite colors. And uh, add some color in here and just, uh, just strengthen what you got here, but leave some of the areas open. Take some blue down here and kind of give us some hard edges on these rocks. Lost edges again. Some of this red, yeah, or this uh, Indian yellow. A little bit of that. Strengthen some of that in there. Get us a hard edge there. A little dry brush effect there doesn't hurt. Like that. Back over here with some more of that magenta that just pops out. It just makes everything just look at that. That neat. Don't want to overdo it though. Okay, now I've, I've pretty much got the foreground as I like it. Now I'm going to switch over to a one inch brush and work a little bit on the lighthouse itself. Now I want, again, I've got two surfaces here and I want to make this particular surface more of a warm color. So I'm kind of dropping in some orange in there or maybe that. Uh, gold. I'm going to just pull it right into the foreground here so there's no hard edges or anything like that. I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and catch this back side of the uh, lighthouse here like this. Just like that. Let it kind of run in there. Interesting little spot here. We don't have to cover up everything or have nice perfect lines. I can let the colors mingle that's a watercolor technique where you drop color, one color into another color, but with interactive it works just as well, if not better. Just like that. I'm going to take some, uh, now I've got blue in the sky here, and I've got a chimney here. So I want to add a warm color, and I'm going to make it, try to make it a little bit opaque, just by doing that. And that's the beauty of acrylics and using having an opaque color. So now I've got a chimney there. I want to put a shadow on one side of it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. Have an eave there. 